Hey everyone, today we're going to be taking a look at the EcoFlow River 2 Pro 768 watt hour portable power station solar generator. Now this is brand new from their brand new lineup in 2023 and this has a 768 watt hour lithium iron phosphate battery. So that's a really nice improvement over their original river series where they just had regular lithium batteries. This thing can be recharged up to 3,000 times and still hold 80% battery capacity, which is really nice to see. So they rate it for over 10 years of lifespan, and this thing does come with a five-year warranty, which is awesome to see. So now they did send me this for testing and review, but we're gonna get into some of the testing that I've done with it, show you guys how it performs, what it comes with, and see if this is one of the best portable power stations under one kilowatt hour. And if you guys are interested in picking up one of these units after you watch this video and feel like it's something that you might be interested in, I'll put affiliate links down below in the description as well as some coupon codes where you guys can save a few bucks. And I think they're gonna have a promotion going on if I get this video up by April 3rd, I think, to maybe the 9th, you do get a free bag, carry case bag with it. I believe that was the promotion, but I'll put everything down there in the description below for you guys to check out and save a few bucks. And if you use those links, I will make a small commission at no extra cost to you, and that's what helps support the channel and helps me creating these videos for all of you. Let's get back to it. So a few of the features that I like about this unit right off the bat is that it has a Bluetooth app that you can connect to the unit and you can control the charge rate from 100 watts all the way up to 940 watts in 50 watt increments. And this thing will charge up in about an hour and 10 minutes from zero to 100%. So super fast charging from AC. In that app, you can also turn on your DC ports, your AC ports. You could turn on X-Boost, which will power devices up to 1600 watts. And I'll be showing you a test of that here coming up. You can set your discharge level for it to stop at 30% down to 0%. So anywhere from 30 to zero, you could stop it. So if you wanted to reserve 30% of your power for something else, you could do that. And you could also adjust your charge level from 50% to 100%. So if you wanted to charge it up, say to 60 or 80%, you could do that and that will save your battery life over time and you'll get probably more recharge cycles out of it. Another really awesome feature that I absolutely love, especially making these videos, is you can set your screen to not time out so that it will stay on continuously. When I'm filming these videos, I'm always trying to show things on the screen and the screen's shutting off, I have to hit the button to turn it back on. So that's a really nice feature that you can go in and make that stay on. And then if you want the screen to go out, all you have to do is tap the button on the front, the unit will stay on, but the screen will go out and then you could tap it to turn it back on. So I absolutely love that feature. I would rather the screens stay on because they probably don't take that much power to run the screens to be honest. At least I don't think it would. You can also set the unit to time out after a certain time and you can set your AC output to time out after a certain time as well or you could set it to never so this thing would stay on indefinitely until it dies if you want. Another cool thing is when you're connected through this with Bluetooth when you're recharging it you could just look on the app see what charge level it's at see how much input it's getting if you're charging from solar. Really really nice app setup and the app connects flawlessly to the unit. I never have to fumble around resetting things resetting the Bluetooth. Every time I open up the app it's just connected so really really good functionality there really nice to see. But let's get into the testing. All right, so this EcoFlow is capable of outputting 800 watts. We're gonna test that now for five minutes straight, charging up that power station. And I have that to set to charge at 800 watts. Gonna go ahead and turn the AC outlets on. Holding steady at 118 volts, 117 volts, which is really nice. A lot of my other power stations will drop to about 107, 108 volts. So really nice, it's holding closer to the 120 volts. And there's the sine wave, pure sine wave looks good. And it's outputting 773 watts, 779 according to that. Shows 777 watts, 773, 775. So this is staying up to date on the app, connected through Bluetooth. So we'll come back in about four minutes and see how it's doing. All right, so we're just over five minutes. Everything's still going good, down to 89%, 776 watts of output, which is exactly what that unit says. Sine wave, still looking good. Hundred nineteen point one volts, 60.2 hertz. 
Excellent. The fan on this is steady, not very loud. The noise you're hearing is actually the fan from that. Works really good at pretty much max capacity. All right, so the EcoFlow River 2 Pro has what's called X-Boost built into it. Now it will output 800 watts and up to 1600 on X-Boost, so we're gonna try that now. I have this water cooker plugged in and it should draw well over 800 watts. And I have the X-Boost turned off, so we're gonna see if this will run it. Probably not. It shows overload right off the bat because it drew 1500 watts. So now what we're going to do is reset that. Going to go ahead into the app and turn on X-Boost. And now we're going to see if it will run the water cooker with X-Boost on. So when X-Boost mode is turned on, you can see the voltage drops to about 86 volts. And it's only putting out still 800 watts, but it is powering this now. But I would be really cautious of powering certain things because it drops the voltage so low that you can damage some products. All right, so now we're gonna try X-Boost mode one more time. And in this test, I have no concerns at all about running a little heater when it's in X-Boost mode. So the first time we're gonna try this in regular mode here and see what happens. And then we're gonna switch over to X-Boost mode. I'm gonna turn the heater on. Holding steady at 118 volts. It kicked at 1,066 watts. And you can see overload. So now let's go in the app. Switch X boost mode to on. And try this again. Heater's back on. And you can see the voltage is starting to drop. 830 watts down to 96 volts. Showing the output on the app just fine, perfectly. And it's running the heater, no problem. 92 volts. Now up to 110. 100, back up to 118 volts. So it will fluctuate up and down as needed depending on how many amps the device is drawing. So overall, the X-Boost is gonna be really nice for running certain devices, certain items. Hair dryers, it would probably work really good for a heat gun, small heaters like this. You just gotta watch sensitive electronics. If you had a, maybe a big screen TV plugged in along with a heater, the amperage might drop a little too low to be safe for certain devices like TVs and things like that. But that is pretty nice here that it did stabilize back out at 118 volts. And show you one more time, I have this set for amps. So you can see the amps increase as the voltage decreases. And then as the amps decrease, the voltage will come back up. So 8.3 amps, 95 volts, 7.5 amps, 6.8, back up to 119, and it's back up to right around 120 volts. And one thing really nice is this is like a touch display on this heater. Some power stations that touch display will not work. With this one, it does work just fine. You can adjust the temperature down, adjust the temperature up, works perfectly. Like I said, sometimes I plug this into certain different units and that touch display does not work. So I don't know what makes that work, if it's something with the ground or whatnot in the unit, but it works perfectly with the EcoFlow River 2 Pro. But I'm actually impressed with this X-Boost mode. It is working really well. All right, so now this EcoFlow has what's called EPS auto switch, which is basically like a UPS mode and it switches in less than 30 milliseconds. So we're gonna try it here with my son's gaming computer and see if it continues to run the computer whenever I unplug this. We'll see if, we'll see what happens here. I'm gonna go ahead and unplug it. And it continued to run it, no problems. All right, so we're out here really, really late in the day. Sun's way, way over there, but I got a 400 watt panel hooked up to the EcoFlow River 2 Pro. 
and I'm getting a maximum input of 220 watts, which is the capped limit. You can see here on the back that the input voltage is 11 to 50 volts DC or 13 amp max, but it is capped, like I said, to 220 watts of input. So that's the max you're gonna get into this unit, but it is nice that they do allow you the higher voltage of some of these bigger panels. All right, so as you can see, this little unit works really well powers things flawlessly, 800 watts continuously, and then X-Boost does work nice for certain things like those heaters and things like that. Like I said, you just gotta be cautious of your sensitive electronics, things that have circuit boards and things like that in it. You might wanna be a little cautious about using X-Boost. However, if you're in a pinch and need to run a little space heater or maybe a little griddle or something like that, it would probably be fine for running those things. So it is really nice to have that feature in a pinch. One thing I wanna mention about that feature, when you turn it on, there is nothing on the display that shows you what mode you're in. If you're in X-Boost mode or if you're not, it's still gonna give you the higher voltage until you start going over the 800 watts, but you might wanna be cautious because you might not realize you're in that mode. And if you start powering things over 800 watts, your voltage is gonna drop. Now the display on this unit is really nice. It shows you all the features you need to see. It shows you your hours remaining, your percent remaining. This little bar around it is a percentage remaining as well. So it shows you input wattage, output wattage, really everything you need to see on here. I like when displays show you actual percentage instead of just bars. So really nice to see pretty much everything you need to know on the display except for X-Boost mode. So now on this unit, you get four AC outputs in the front, which is capable, like I said, of outputting 800 watts continuously. You get three USB-A ports and you get 100 watt USB-C power delivery port. That's an input and an output so you can charge from USB-C, which is really nice to see. You have two 5521 ports over here, which is capable of outputting up to three amps. And you have a 12 volt regulated socket here which is capable of outputting 10 amps. Now that would have been nice to see these 5521s be able to output 10 amps because I like to run my portable refrigerators, my little portable coolers off of these jacks here with a plug that's converted to plug right into there. Now I could plug it into the cigarette lighter port and run it, but I really prefer to use these. And when they're only three amps, they will not run my portable coolers. Sometimes they'll kick the overload. So would have been nice to see 10 amps there on the outputs, but not really that big of a deal. Most people aren't really gonna use those 5521 plugs anyway. You have a nice vent on each side for the fan to blow through, which is really nice. And you have your AC adapter input here, which the brick is built into this unit. So all you have is just a cable to connect this thing to charge up. You don't have to carry a big brick around, which is awesome. And then you have your 11 to 50 volt DC XT60 input port, which allows you to charge from solar up to 220 watts. So now with this unit, you get the charge cord. And like I said, no brick, really nice. You get a 5521 to 5521 cable, and you can also use this with 5525 ports, which is really nice. Then you get your cigarette lighter port, that goes from cigarette lighter to XT60 to recharge this thing from your vehicle. That's pretty much all the cables you get. Now, if you're gonna charge from solar, you're gonna need something like this, which is an MC4 to XT60 or whatever plug your solar panel is to XT60. So keep that in mind that you will have to purchase that separately. And I might put down in the description some different cables and accessories and adapters that I use with solar. If you guys are interested in that, make sure you check that out as well. Now, a couple other tests I like to do is an AC phantom power draw. So when the inverter or the AC outputs on the front are turned on, how much battery power does this thing use for it to just be on? For my testing, it used about 2% per hour for those to be turned on or about 15.36 watts per hour. For the DC power draw with just the DC ports turned on, so if you're powering a DC cooler or a freezer, something like that, or a DC heated blanket, I didn't notice much power drain from that being turned on. It only used about 2% over the course of 15 hours, so very, very minimal power draw on the DC output ports when they're on. And on my discharge test, I used it to power a 55 inch TV and a small heated blanket, which was about 130 watts total. So it pulled 130 watts for four hours and 53 minutes, and I got 610 watt hours out of this battery, which was 79% efficient, which in my opinion was pretty good for it being such a low wattage draw. 
If I was drawing a higher wattage, say 500 watts continuously, I probably would have got a better output out of it. And you figure I lost about 10% of that for it being on for those five hours. So if I was drawing a higher output load, I probably would have got more efficiency out of the unit. So overall guys, yeah, really nice unit. Haven't had any issues with it, like I said. I feel like this is a really good quality product that's gonna last a good while. So overall guys, pretty minimalistic here. Really nice unit, works flawlessly. Now, two things that I would have liked to seen or maybe see upgraded in the future is there is no light on this unit. I mean, if you're using this thing for camping, which I think a lot of people are gonna do, or even home backup when your power goes out, I'd really like to have just some kind of light on the front, maybe a little light bar up here or, or somewhere even on the back. I mean, I don't care where it's at, just give you some kind of light to maybe see being able to plug things in in the dark or to be able to light a tent or something up. They really missed the opportunity to put a wireless charging pad here on the top. They have a nice flat spot here that would have been really nice to see a wireless charger for your cell phones up here. And last but not least, would have liked to seen 10 amp output on the 5521 ports but like i said that's not really that big of a deal i could always use the cigarette lighter port here but other than that guys really nice little unit here and like i said if you're interested in picking one of these up there will be affiliate links down below in the description and also some coupon codes where you guys can save a few bucks if you decide to pick one of them up and if you found this review video interesting and you want to learn about e-bikes solar generators power stations solar panels fixing things and just things that I think you guys can learn from, then make sure you guys subscribe and stick around and I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching everyone.